good morning King's Arms very warm welcome to our, our weekly 9.30 live stream welcome to all our regulars and welcome to any uh, guests that are coming in perhaps you've just come in occasionally or even here for the first time so a very warm welcome to you uh, just loving that song that uh, was being played prior to, to, to starting the service that he's coming on the clouds and king and kingdoms will bow down do you know I, I, I find that uh, and I've said this, I know I'm, I'm repeating myself, but having this this regular 9.30 live stream does just provide a reference point week by week as days seem to roll into days and weeks to weeks. And who would have believed we'd still be doing this six months later or be in this state? And so you get that reference point, uh, something to look forward to. And, and I hope you look forward to this. But, you know, the one thing that we know we can look forward to for all certainty you know, uh, we had a few technical problems this morning. We at one stage thought we might be a bit late coming on. So whilst we do it, it's not 100% guaranteed, 99.9, .9, I hope. But one thing that is 100% guaranteed is that he is going to be coming on the clouds and king and kingdoms will bow down. And, you know, then all, all the things that bother us today, all the things that we think are so important, all the things that d distract us and absorb our time are just going to pale into insignificance against his glory. So I just want to pray for you this morning. I know some of you will have had great weeks, some of you will be on holiday, and some of you have had uh, difficult weeks, and we'll be praying, obviously, for, for those things later. But let's just put whatever situation you're in now before the Lord. And remember that his ways are above our ways, his thoughts are are above our thoughts and he is the alpha and omega he is the beginning and the end and father we just bow our knee before you now and come to worship you we look forward to hearing from tim we look forward to hearing your word and and the point of spiritual gifts this morning we look forward to praying together we look forward to worshiping together and I just pray that each of you, as we gather this morning, will be using the comments below. If you've got a verse or a word or, or the Lord says something to you during uh, our time of worship, feel free to post it in the comments. Let's encourage one another this morning. I've just seen Tim's come online, so he's going to be ready for, for later as well. But we're going to go into worship first. And we are just going to allow ourselves to be soaked in the Holy Spirit this morning and to recognise him as the creator and author of all things. Let's get ready. I just, uh, we're going to start with a well-known song, Over the Mountains and the Seas, Your River Runs with Life, Love for Me. And this reminded me of Psalm 46 this morning, that God is our refuge and strength. He is our ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations may be in uproar and kingdoms fall, but he lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Come on, Lord, now's the time to worship. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me.
your river runs with love. Oh, I will open a cloud. I'll let the healers set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will take it in love. I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your I know But when the world Has seen the light They will dance with joy Like we're dancing to be in your truth. I will daily lift my hands. I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your Dancing, yeah, oh, I feel like dancing. It's foolishness, I know. But when the world has seen the light, come on and dance with joy like we dance. Once again, 
once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life. Now you are exalted, Lord, but now you are exalted to the highest place. This saving grace, I'm full of praise once again. Oh, I'm full of praise once again. I'm full of praise. Yeah, I'm full of praise once again. Here yeah, once again I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy, Lord. I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life. Oh, once again I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy, Lord, I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life. Before you, you silence the boast of sin and grief. The heavens are calling the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now I'm You have no rival, you have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever, Lord, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name, above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. name it is and that power is realized through sacrifice through cost through giving of himself yesterday I had to uh, just go down to the memorial in Lydney the war memorial and place a wreath in remembrance of VJ Day and just thinking of the enormous cost of that victory and that victory came at a cost and you know no worthwhile victory comes without a cost and we have victory we can stand in victory as church today we can stand in victory as individuals but that victory and that greatest name above all names came because of a cost a cost paid by Jesus a cost paid on the cross thank you for the cross Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, my friend. Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, thank 
naked for the cross, my friend. Sing it again. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. I think I want to sing it again. Just give him thanks and glory. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, my friend. I'm thankful for the cross, thankful for the cross, thankful for the cross, my friend. Give you glory, thank you for the victory, Lord, thank you for all you've done. I raise my hands, I lift my hands to you, the coming King. Yeah. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I can sing. trees won that will sing forevermore that's a truth that's a reality before us that the heavens are eternal and the earth is temporary and we have a home in glory land that outshines the sun boy that's an old song isn't it but, but it's a truth we have that home in glory and we're going to sing forever because of the cross hallelujah just one more time then come on i hope you're worshiping at home i hope your heart is before god Oh, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. I say thank you for the cross. I'm thankful for the cross. Thankful for the cross, my friend. One more time, man. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, you're my friend, Jesus Lord. I'm thankful for the cross, yeah, grateful for the cross, grateful for the cross, my friend. Hallelujah. Come on, why don't we use that that the time of thanksgiving? I just I hope you're moved into worship. I hope you've been moved into prayer. I hope you've been moved to stand before the cross with joy and thanksgiving. Let's use that 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 sense of the Holy Spirit's presence, that knowledge of the Holy Spirit's presence now to to come in power in prayer for, for Yana, for anybody that's sick in our congregation, for healing, believing for miracles this morning. Let's do that now. I'll just mute my microphone here uh, and James and Lucy will play a track and we can just worship and praise God. Give him glory, can give him thanks and bring your prayers of intercession to him now. Amen.
man. Do you know um, that that psalm I read, Psalm forty six, as to use as a a prelude to worship. I read the first few verses. The last few verses are this. It says, he makes wars to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. I just thought it was apt that uh, James and Lucy had picked Be Still for that, that, that music to our background to our prayers there. And as I read it then, I thought, you know, he makes wars to cease. Wars can come in many different forms. There is the most obvious like World War II and the war in Japan and, you know, all the various wars we think of and physical battles over the years. Um, with you know, with swords and spears, tanks and bombs, and those terrible bombs dropped in, in Japan that caused such devastation. But wars also come, you know, in 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 a mental form as well. And we know that mental health is a huge issue, especially in the current climate. Um, and and there is a battle for our mind as well. You know, we are transformed as Christians by the renewing of our mind. And, and reading scriptures such as this draw our minds to the Lord. And, and help us to focus on the things that are good and of him. And, you know, we need to make a conscious effort to do that when we're in the middle of a battle when sickness comes against us or when troubles come against us, financial issues come against us. You know, those are wars of, of another kind. And we need to know that we, we draw out of, not out of our own pocket, which, which has a bottom. And often you can put your hand in your pocket and find there's nothing there. But, you know, the Lord's pockets are, are deep and full and he is never short and and of course there is also a battle in the heavenly realms there is a spiritual battle and that in a sense is the battle above all battles that is a battle uh, that jesus has already won the victory but we as church are called to fight that battle and to push back the powers of darkness and to, to win victories until the day that although the declaration is signed when jesus comes and returns and, and calls all things unto himself and he's given us uh, uh, the tools to do that job we call them gifts and Tim's going to talk a bit about those gifts this morning and the point of those gifts and and we're going to then ha having heard Tim's word this morning we'll then close this morning's service but you know we've got our 5 30 evening service which we call encounter we want to go into that encounter demonstrating the gifts that God has given us and gathering as church being the full body of Christ you know there is a difference between gathering in personal prayer and gathering in corporate prayer and drawing all the resources around us that God has given us so let's hear uh, what Tim has got to say this morning let's hear about those spiritual gifts take notes please can I urge you to take notes so you just don't forget whatever uh, is said this morning and the things that are good of God that gives you a chance to go and meditate on them but bless you Tim I'm thankful that you're up early again and you're ready to share God's word can I hand over to you now and allow you to bring God's word to us okay thank you very much Walter and uh, it's a privilege to come again to you King's Arms and anybody else who may be listening in um, it's been a joy actually for me to do these studies um, I can't believe that three weeks have gone by already and uh, for me, it's been a great revision to really revisit um, areas that are probably quite commonplace to most of us believers, particularly if we've been walking to, with the Lord for any length of time. So just to quickly recap, do you remember the first, what's the point was of why do we meet together? And um, hopefully something of the truth of the uniqueness of meeting together as God's body, as God's family, um, really came home to us, I believe, the, the potential that's locked up in that, just how special we are to God, that we're unique, we're called out people for purpose. And that's why we meet together to demonstrate to the world around us and even to the heavenly realms that God actually um, has brought us out as to show us off to the principalities in Paris for his unique purpose. And then um, last week we looked at the uh, communion meal the holy covenant of Jesus, precious body that was broken for us and, and his shed blood. 
And a reminder that actually that's a covenant meal. God is after all covenant God. He never breaks his covenant with us. Sadly, we do. But when we come back to God and we remember the elements of his bread and wine, that when we discern ourselves and our walk with the Lord and each other correctly, um, there's great healing and blessing and protection uh, locked up in that communion meal. Well, this morning then, um, the subject is, what's the point of the gifts of the Spirit? Um, probably it's one of the most uh, common teachings I've ever brought in my life, actually, um, and one that fascinates and uh, excites me, actually. And, and so we're going to be looking uh, today at an overview of the gifts of the Spirit. So, and, and hopefully at the end, um, I hope I can just give out a few words of knowledge maybe for some of you um, as a demonstration really of, of the Holy Spirit in action. And all of these focus around the family of God. And if there's one thing that I've kind of discovered afresh through doing these studies, it's the privilege and potential that's locked up in God's family, the church. And that when we meet together, uh, again, we're demonstrating not only to each other, but to the world around us, both spiritual and material, that we're different, we're, we're special, that we are um, anointed with none other than the precious power of God for purpose to see his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So let's just begin then by way of introduction. And the gifts have always been in the Bible and available to the church. And yet really for the majority of the church and for a long time in church history, they've gone unrecognized and undiscovered. Um, in recent times, there's been a rediscovery of the gifts. Can not you say amen, hallelujah to that? And I guess really at the turn of the century with the birth of last century, I should say, over a hundred years ago now with the birth of the Pentecostal movement, again, there was a great emphasis placed on the Holy Spirit and his gifts. But for many years, that just remained kind of uh, one stream of the church. And in fact, I'm led to believe that it was often ostracized and people who were Pentecostals were often looked at with disdain and a bit wicky, wacky and weird. And of course, with the advent of the charismatic movement, um, some date it back as far as the late 50s, early 60s, 70s. I'm tempted to say in my lifetime, probably most of our lifetimes, the, the role of the gifts has really, um, if you like, blossomed and mushroomed to impact and affect many mainline denominations. Praise God. And um, we see many churches, many denominations that have been impacted by the, the gifts of the Spirit, men and women, ministers, lay people, whose lives and ministries have been revisited, if you like, revitalized, re-empowered, and redirected by the exercise of these spiritual gifts. I shall never forget when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I have to do a separate one for this because I don't want to take up all the, at the time this morning, but I remember in Hong Kong when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues, for me, it, Christianity, it was like going from black and white to color. If ever you remember the days of black and white television and then color TV came in, a complete transformation. Well, that was like that for me in my Christian life. Um, really exciting and a whole change in my Christian attitude and outlook and really in the way that God could use me for his purposes. So uh, this morning, we're going to look at the nature and purpose of these spiritual gifts. As I emphasize, it's really an overview um, and we're going to first of all look at a very familiar scripture uh, where Paul lists classically the nine gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12 verses 7 to 11. Of course there are two other places in the New Testament. Um, in Ephesians 4:11, uh, there are gifts mentioned there, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, and I would say about those gifts for another day perhaps, the person themselves are the gift to the church. So, for example, one of them as a pastor or an evangelist, that person is a, a gift that God has raised up for a particular church or area. Of course, the other gifts are mentioned in Romans chapter 12, um, more of an administrative um, emphasis there. I mean, leadership is mentioned there. But this morning, just to keep it nice and simple, and I want to emphasize body language here, um, Paul lists nine gifts 
Some say that's representative, some says it's an all-encompassing, but whatever. Let's just look then at 1 Corinthians 12, verses 7 to 11, and it says this. But to each one, that's to each one of us, is given the manifestation, we'll come back to that word in a moment, of the spirit for the common good. You see, it's not for you to be lifted up or made special, but it's for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the effecting of miracles, to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit, that's very important, you see, it's the one and the same Holy Spirit that works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills. Not as we want, but as he wills in us. Okay, now then, I just want to just quickly then list those gifts of the spirit. So we have a word of knowledge, we have a word of wisdom, faith healing, miracles, prophecy, distinguishing of spirits, that's between evil, natural, and the Holy Spirit, various kind of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. And as I've read that list, I hope you picked out that actually they're supernatural. It goes beyond the natural level, the natural realm. They're supernatural. Again, okay, so I've got here four important facts that concern all these gifts. And there are these, first of all, just that, they're gifts. They cannot be earned or worked for. Isn't that wonderful? It's God's grace. Can I just say, as I go on in my Christian life and walk, it's all the grace of God. However clever or gifted we are, ultimately, it's all the grace of God. We have just got to make ourselves available. Um, that lady, uh, that lady, Catherine Corman, who was used remarkably by the Lord uh, many years ago now, particularly in the level of miraculous healings. Um, she said the ability that God is looking for is none other than availability. That's never left me. I think that's so true. He just wants us to be available. Just turn up for work. As I say, just turn up for work, make yourself a living sacrifice, he'll do the rest. He'll decide how and where to equip you. And so, okay, so they can they must be received by us through a simple response of faith. Okay, you can just ask for faith. And it doesn't take any time to acquire spiritual gifts, as opposed to the fruit of the spirit, which takes much longer to develop in us. So they are gifts given sovereignly, supernaturally by God to any one of us. Number two then, both at the beginning and end of that list, Paul uses the phrase to each one. To each one is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. Then at the, at the end, he says that one and the same spirit, it's the Holy Spirit, works all things distributing, distributing, can't say the word, to each one individually, just as he wills or decides. So Paul here emphasizes for each one, they're available to all believers. To me, it seems that God wants all believers, every single one of us, to participate in these gifts. They are not meant for a particular section of the church or a privileged view. You know, I think for too long, we've just looked at the people at the front to dish out all the gifts and abilities to help us. No, each one of us has been anointed and equipped by God. I picture an orchestra. The church is an orchestra. You, you know, if just a few people played at the front, it wouldn't be very melodious, really, would it? It would be uh, rather quiet and possibly dull. But once we all take our instruments, tune up and play and use what God's given us in a common gathering together. Uh, if you've got, you know, half a dozen people, 20, 30, certainly 50 to 100 people, when we all start flowing in the gifts, we have music, spiritual music. 
And again, it's come home to me, the potential that's locked up when God's spirit is allowed to flow amongst us. We're supernatural people. We're naturally supernatural. Okay, then going on to the third reason, Paul describes these gifts by a key word, as I mentioned earlier, manifestation. They're a manifestation. And really, this is what distinguishes this particular way the spirit moves in our lives from the many other ways he moves. Of course, the spirit is so creative, isn't he? He moves in many and various ways in and through our lives and the life of the church. But in the way he moves through the gifts, it, it's through a manifestation. It's, in other words, it's perceptible by the human senses. You can sense, see, um, feel when the Holy Spirit is flowing through an individual. I mean, after all, you see, the Holy Spirit himself is God actually in us, or his holy breath in us, is a person who indwells us, but he's invisible. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but he can be perceived by the senses when we start flowing through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, for example, when somebody stands up and brings a prophetic word, if it's from God, you realize, my goodness, the Lord is amongst us this morning. And I, I sometimes say this by way of illustration. You might be meeting together and water's leading us in worship and we're thoroughly being caught up in the presence of the Lord. And you just feel you need to stand up and say, maybe this is for one or a few people. Father really loves you. He wants you to know you're his special child. He knows everything you're going through. He loves you. That's happened to me. But I've, in a way, wrestled with bringing it because I thought, well, everybody knows that God loves them. That's nothing out of the ordinary. That's not very extraordinary. But unbeknown to me, there may be a single mother that's walked in. She's come in late. She's a single mother. She's been up all night with a sick child. She's at her wit's end. And she's saying to God, I cannot go on any further. It's the end. I've had enough. Lord, I'm going to church for one final time. If you don't speak to me, God, I'm out of here. Does that happen? All the time. And so you're wrestling with this word and you just give it out. And that woman suddenly realizes, yes, that word was for me. God knows where I live. He knows what I'm going through. He loves me and he's going to set me free. And she's re delivered. She's released that time in that place, in that time of worship. You see, you may not think it's special, but one person there, it might be a lifeline for their future and their future walk with the Lord. So when the spirit is allowed to manifest through the gifts, my goodness, we are supernatural people and the world around us is looking for answers for supernatural power to cha radically change their lives. Okay, so through these gifts then, I just use that by way of illustration, the gifts of the Holy Spirit manifest himself through a believer in a space-time world. In other words, Sunday morning, whenever we used to meet, or this morning now, the Holy Spirit speaks, and we know that God is with us. And because of these gifts, we are aware that the Holy Spirit is there because we can sense him through our senses. So the key word is he's, he manifests his presence through the gifts. It's as if he brings himself out into the open, either through a prophetic word or somebody's radically healed or there's a tongue that speaks directly into somebody's situation. So it brings him out into the open. OK, where did we get to? Number four, then. And again, this is very obvious. The gifts are supernatural. They are manifestations of God himself in the person of the Holy Spirit, and they are always on a higher level. This is very important. They are always on a higher level than human ability or education that would enable us to achieve on our own. You see, this isn't something that we can study in a way. We can read the Bible and study the Bible, but I mean, you can't get go to a college or university, university, and be en en endowed with the gifts. They're supernaturally given to you by God. 
Um, okay then, I think I've made that point. Now then, um, well, the good thing about that, of course, is that all of us qualify. It doesn't matter whether you're not particularly well educated or you've had basic kind of education, that's totally immaterial. In fact, I've noticed that sometimes God gives the most gracious and powerful gifts to those very people. But anyway, they are neatly divided up into three groups containing three gifts. So in, if you like, three times three, three gifts of three. And the first group I've called revelation gifts. The revelation gifts are, of course, revelation means an unveiling or a bit like in the morning, if you like, you get up and you pull back the curtains and the morning sun floods your room. It's a revelation. The light is coming in. Okay, so the revelation gifts are these. Number one, the word of wisdom, and that's supernatural wisdom, the word of knowledge, and those two often go together, by the way, and discerning of spirits. Which spirit are we dealing with here? Incidentally, um, you may have been in a situation where somebody's been preaching or speaking, and you're not sure whether that's really from the word of God or not. And it's kind of like a check in your spirit. But there again, on other occasions when you feel, say, yes, I'm being fed. I know this is coming directly from God's word and from the heart of God. And that's kind of how your inner spirit distinguishes whether it's from just the natural realm, the spiritual realm, or even the demonic realm, um, which, is, which is, of course, from the enemy and his demons. So the discerning of spirits is, is a key gift to have. I've been praying for that gift a lot in recent days. Okay, they're the revelation gifts. Then, of course, you've got the gifts of power. And don't we like these? Okay, the gifts of power, the gift of faith. And that's a gift of faith distinct from our Christian faith. This is a supernatural endowment for a given moment. I remember one um, person said to me, he was preaching, I think, in India, and he preached on faith, a very powerful message on faith. And then he saw a man on a stretcher coming towards him and his heart sank. He thought, oh, no, they want me to pray for this person. Either he's dead or he's dying. And I, they're expecting me to for a miracle. But as the person was brought further, closer and closer to this preacher, he said, God suddenly gave him the gift of faith. And he knew that that person was going to be totally healed or raised up. And indeed, that's what, what happened. But the point I want to give to you was that the gift of faith was given so that the miracle or the healing could be manifest. So it's a special gift. Um, and a gift of faith, miracles, and healings. Don't we want to see more of that in the church today? I really do. I love it when I see those gifts in action. And then, of course, the vocal gifts. So that's tongues. An interpretation of tongues and of course if somebody has a tongue in the church we should wait for the interpretation so that we can all hear what God is saying and prophecy where God intervenes and um, brings what he has on his mind or his agenda into our natural world okay so I hope that's clear now then let's just move on and sorry I'm having to go quickly for time but the four, I've got here four purposes to which the gifts are made available to God. Because after all, we're trying to answer the question, what's the point? Okay. Number one, then, to make room for God's sovereignty. Um, I think sometimes today we don't make much room for this in the church. Um, but we have to remember that God is in supreme control of the church. He doesn't want anything in the church that's purely under human direction and leaves no room for his intervention or overruling. But through these supernatural gifts, God can intervene and act and manifest his sovereignty. He, his, he is ultimately in supreme, supreme control of his church. Okay, we all know that, don't we? Um, I, I, I can, if you like, remember a situation where I was doing some evangelism when I was at Bible College down near Bournemouth. On Friday afternoons, um, I volunteered to do coffee bar evangelism. I love coffee. I love sitting in coffee bars talking, as you probably can imagine. And um, anyway, I remember talking to this Muslim. And, uh, of course, it was... Um, absolutely hopeless. I was there talking for an hour, an hour, hour and a half, two hours maybe, telling him that the word of God is true, that he needs to repent and turn his life around. 
he was coming back to me with no um, Islam is the only true religion uh, Muhammad is the prophet of God Christianity is um, suspect etc 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 it's like watching a game of tennis I would bat he would bat we were getting nowhere fast and after about two hours of pure discouragement I quietly whispered to the Lord please help me where do I go from here and immediately he gave me a word of knowledge that this Muslim brother he was lovely devout Muslim was in fact in an adulterous relationship, which of course Muslims frown upon. So at a given pause in the conversation, I just gently brought this in. Well, he stopped dead in his tracks. He went as pale as anything, nearly dropped his coffee and said, who told you? Who told you? How do you know about my life? So I said, well, the Holy Spirit just put that into my mind. Is it true? So from that time on, he was all mine, or should I say the Lord's, and I shared the gospel with him and um, he gave his life to the Lord Jesus. Why? Because he could see that there was a supernatural power at work, I, a word of knowledge given to me about his situation. I would love to see more of that in the church, wouldn't you? Particularly when you're evangelizing or reaching the lost, where God gives you, if you like, a pinprick of wisdom or knowledge into that person's life. It's not that he exposes everything, he doesn't need to, but just enough to know to get their attention and get them for the Lord, get them biting on the hook, so to speak. Okay, so number two then, the gifts lift us above the realm of our natural, that's really what I've just been saying, above the realm of our natural ability. There's no way I was gonna win the argument. In fact, I've rarely won people through argument, actually. Um, uh, it's always been through the supernatural gifts of God. And I think that's very important. Um, if you look, by the way, through the book of Acts, it's one of those books which is full of the supernatural. And um, it's a scriptural historical account of the young church in action. I remember once I took a yellow pen and I underlined everything in the book of Acts pertaining to the supernatural. So where there was an angelic visitation, a miracle, a salvation, a dream, a vision. Um, and I've prayed for this where Philip found himself in the desert. He was supernaturally transported. I've heard a couple of testimonies of that. I hope I'm not running my time, but I remember a brother, uh, I think he was a black brother and he needed to go to another country. He didn't have an airfare, fair, didn't have the airfare ticket or anything, but he felt God wanted him to go to another country. So the Lord told him to go into the gents toilet. So he did. And the Lord said to him, praise me worship me for an hour he finished came out of the toilets and guess where he was in the very country he needed to be and you think well that's extraordinary well it is but i believe it happens and i believe that actually god is going to increase the supernatural in our time as time approaches so christianity is a supernatural faith we have to remember that and we can never talk of a New Testament Christianity, brothers and sisters, that's lived out purely on the natural level. When I went through the book of Acts, and as I say, pertain, I underlined in yellow, everything pertaining to the supernatural, I found that every chapter had turned yellow. It was a yellow book in my Bible. Always remember it. I challenge you to do the same if you haven't. Okay, and number three then, the purpose of the gifts. They confirm our testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, I haven't given you many scriptures this morning, but let's look, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. And it says this, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, sorry, verses 4 to 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 to 8. I thank, this is Paul writing, I thank my God always concerning you, isn't that beautiful, for the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus. Imagine Paul writing to you this letter, that in everything, and he's talking to the church in Lydney. Imagine Paul, and he's writing, the Apostle Paul, he's writing to the church in Lydney, and this is what he's saying to us as a church, that in everything, everything, you are enriched in him, in Jesus Christ, in all speech and knowledge, isn't that amazing? I often pray, God, give me revelation knowledge from your scriptures. Unveil the scriptures to me. I want to dig in this gold mine of your word. 
And that's the two things I pray about my ministry, that I can bring the revelation and I can see the power of God at work. That's, this is so beautiful. Verse six, even as the testimony concerning Christ was confirmed in you, so that you are not lacking in any gift. Are we lacking in any gift? I'm speaking as a church. <laughs> awaiting eagerly for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, we could make that a prayer, couldn't we, in our lives. Um, and notice what Paul is thanking God for on behalf of the Christians, Corinthian Christians, that the testimony of Christ was confirmed or strengthened or established among them. And it was done by the fact that they were not lacking in any gift, not in their superior knowledge, that's very Greek, um, but in the gifts, speech, vocal, knowledge, revelation. And we see that the one main purpose of these gifts confirm or strengthen the testimony of Jesus Christ in his people, the church. Wouldn't it be marvellous that people could come to us, to the church where we meet, and they're so struck by the power of God at work, both through speech, revelation and power, that they fall down and acknowledge truly God is amongst you. I, I long for that day. I believe that day's coming. I'm looking forward to a glorious, triumphant, supernatural powerful company of people we call the church that will impact where you live impact the town where you live the region where you live and the country and it just takes a few people that are serious about pursuing god and the supernatural element through the gifts of the holy spirit well and i'm preaching to myself this morning brothers and sisters so Notice that Paul says these Christians were not lacking in any gift, awaiting the revelation of Jesus Christ. And God shall confirm you until the end, right until the end, when Jesus comes back. Brothers and sisters, I believe that when Jesus comes back, he's coming back for a triumphant church. He's not coming back for a weak, fearful, defeatist or defeated church. No, 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 no. That doesn't sit with me at all in the New Testament. I believe that God is coming back for a bride, a people, a called out people that demonstrate to the world his power, his love, his mercy, his grace, his goodness. And then I think we're going to see salvation by the truckloads. I really do. Okay. Afterwards, Paul clearly envisaged that the operation of the supernatural gifts will continue through the church near the age. I don't believe that the, uh, the gifts of the spirit, which has been taught in some quarters, has ever ceased. No, 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 no. I think we need the gifts as long as we're on planet Earth. I certainly do. I, in fact, it's impossible to live the Christian life, to be the church, to see God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven without the work of the Holy Spirit, the unique breath in and through us manifested in those gifts. Otherwise, we just really become a social religious club, being nice to one another, but lacking the power. No, 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 no. That's not the church that I or Paul or the Lord Jesus had in mind. Okay. The fourth reason. How are we doing? The fourth reason. The fourth reason for these gifts or purpose is that they enable all believers. This is so important, brothers and sisters, all believers to contribute to the common good, which is the reason Paul stated them in 1 Corinthians 12. To me, it's very significant, but immediately after listing the gifts, he speaks about the body and its members. Because you see, the spiritual gifts are one of the primary ways in which the members of the body are unable to contribute to the common good. 
You see, it's interesting, through this series, it all comes back to the common good, to the family of God. What can be achieved together? It's not that one or two individuals can look super spiritual or different or special. I mean, even if you look at the gifts mentioned in Ephesians 4.11, where you get listed the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor, teacher, what is their main gift? I believe at least 50% of their ministry is to equip the church. You see, one person can do very little, but when you have a company of people, when you have one evangelist, that's okay. But when you have a company of evangelists working, oh, the, the growth and the impact is exponential. And that's the whole, whole point is to equip, anoint the church into that supernatural realm and plane. Oh, I love it. I, I love teaching on this. And I also love to see people equipped and anointed to discover their calling and gifting. And brothers and sisters, if you're sitting there listening to me this morning, say, well, I really don't know what my gift is. Spend time before the Father, because you have, I would say this, every believer has at least one gift. And when you pursue that and use it, God often anoints you with other gifts. But if you haven't got or haven't uh, um, discovered or you're not aware of your gift, find out what it is. And then you can come to church. And rather just sitting in the church pew to receive all the time, come to give. Um, I always remember a uh, lady missionary was relaying to me that somebody came to her and said, what's the difference between the church in the East, and they were working in Hong Kong at the time, many years ago, and the church in the West. And her answer to me was very interesting. They said, well, in the West, people go to church, of course, we are the church, but you know what I'm saying, go to church to get, oh, I hope the pastor's on form this morning, or I hope water's got a good word for us this morning. But in the East, they come to give, they come, come to contribute. And in, with that thought in mind, let's just look at 1 Corinthians. So we've played around 1 Corinthians this morning, haven't we? It's probably the best book on the gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. And this is Paul talking again. And he says this. What is the outcome then, brothers? So he's just been listing the gifts. We've just gone through the gifts. So in other words, what's the point then? What's this all about, brothers and sisters? He says, when you assemble, each one has a psalm or a teaching a revelation that would be included in the gifts, uh, a tongue, an interpretation, that all things be done for what? Edification. Okay, so edification is so that when we come to church, we can all contribute in a godly, orderly manner, and we're all blessed. We're all encouraged, a bit like that poor lady at the wit's end, and she goes knowing that God loves her, he knows all about her situation, and she's um, marked if you like she hasn't been forgotten and I've discovered this it's awesome when you give when you give out of your uh, if you like reservoir of anointing God always replenishes and you always get more than you gave out I always come away feeling blessed when I've given somebody once said it's a bit like the difference between the Dead Sea in Israel and the, the Dead Sea and the Galilee uh, the Dead Sea, you know, it's probably, I think, almost 30% or 28% solids. If you've ever been to Israel, go and swim in it. You can almost float right on the top of the surface. It's got so much solid in it. And so everything flows in, but it doesn't go out. It stops. And so it's dead. Nothing grows. The difference between, if you like, the Galilee is water flows in and out, in and out. And so it's always fresh. And you can always catch fish there. Brothers and sisters, we should be like that. We should always be receiving and giving, receiving and giving. And that's how we grow. And that's how we stay fresh. Uh, not called, not um, referring to King's Arms, of course. But sadly, in many facets of church life, people just come and sit <laughs> and try and receive and wonder why they're not really going anywhere in their Christian life. Well, let me suggest you ask God for the gifts and then you start to use them. And you don't have to just use them in a company of believers. I've used them when I've been witnessing, as I've mentioned, maybe in your home situation, you can ask for wisdom. And it's amazing how that can break open when you're evangelizing or sharing the gospel supernaturally with words of wisdom, words of knowledge. It's a major tool to have. Okay, so 
Time is going, so let me wrap up to conclude by saying this. So you see that when the gifts are available, and they are, members don't just come to get or listen, but they get to contribute and contribute out of those supernatural spiritual abilities they have received through those gifts. Well, amen, and God bless you. Well, thank you very much for listening. Um, see God if you don't know what your gift is. And when you can, use it. And you'll be amazed at how blessed you will be, number one. And number two, a blessing you'll be to many people oh. around you. Okay. I just, before I hand back to Walter, I just want to say, I just sense in my spirit, mm. and this is by no means being condemnatory, but I just sense a couple of people, quite naturally, who are very fearful about the situation we're going through at the moment. It's a very weird situation, isn't it? A strange world we're living in. But if you're feeling fearful, I feel the Lord has got a word for you, and that is, don't fear. The Lord is with you. He knows all about you. He loves you. Your life is in his hands and replace that fear with his faith. And where do you get faith? When you read the word of God, faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing and by hearing and by hearing. Never stop after one hearing the word of God. And that will replace your fear with faith. Okay. And then I believe Walter was mentioning somebody, people who are sick. Again, just pray and thank God by faith for your healing. Don't go by your symptoms. I believe there's healing in the atonement. That's really another study. But basically it's this, that when Jesus died on the cross for you, he took care of your sins, mm -hmm. your healing, your emotions, everything. That's very Hebraic. The whole of your being, spirit, soul, and body was taken care of. So um, maybe you could take it over communion. Make sure you're right with God and with each other. And over communion with your husband or your wife or your children, um, or with you know the church leadership if you want to, you check with water on that. And I believe your healing will flow. And by I will say this: that faith says thank you. You may not feel any change in your body, but you don't look at your symptoms. You look to the Lord and say, Father, I believe when you died on the cross, it says by your stripes I am healed. And you appropriate by faith what happened over 2000 years ago and faith says thank you jesus it's for me it's got your name on it mm -hmm. and then next week or two let's hear some testimonies of people that have been touched by the holy spirit sometimes it's instant sometimes it's gradual sometimes it's months sometimes it might be a month but keep plugged in <laughs> never give up as winston church used to say <laughs> Keep on keeping on. Okay, well, I've gone on rather a long time. Um, it's been a joy bringing this series to you. And God bless you so much. And I'll hand back to Walter. And I believe um, Bob is speaking next week on leadership. So really look forward to that. So God bless you. And thank you very much. Hey, Tim. Amen. Thank you so much. Please, you know, I know you're going to stay there. If you feel you have a word and you want to come back online, obviously you're very welcome to. Um, Sure. I just want us to spend a moment longer there and, and, and reflecting. It's certainly a challenge. You know, uh, we've got our uh, 5.30 session, which is hours away yet, um, to, to go and, and encounter. I, I feel like I want to go down the centre now and carry on in prayer um, based out of that word. Because that word has come as the living word. The Lord says, my word does not return empty when he speaks out. And Tim, you've spoken the living word of God this morning and, it, and it's not going to return empty it's going to return bringing fruit and, and bringing healing and w we need to stay mindful of that word between now and going to the center at 5 30. we need to, to say you know the question i've got off for you now is how will you prepare between now and, and us gathering at 5 30. think now of what will you do will you meditate on that word will you look up those scriptures will you say lord you know there are areas in my life perhaps i'll ask you this question tonight when you come people is you know there will be areas where you find it easy to believe for things and there'll be areas where you find it hard to believe areas where you're strong in faith and areas where you're weak in faith some people are, are very find it very easy to speak a word of knowledge but find it very hard to believe for finance or or completely the opposite way around but you know the lord wants to bring all those gifts of faith into the church and we want to pray for you for areas where perhaps you feel weak or uh, in your faith. But we want to encounter 
the Lord tonight based on those four points that Tim has brought this morning. Let me just quickly remind you of what they are. We'll, we'll make a slide up this afternoon with these four points on. The point of the spiritual the point of the spiritual gifts is to make room for God's sovereignty. Don't we want to do that when we meet tonight? To lift us above the natural is point two. We want to do that. We don't want to just meet in, in our own strength. We want point three to confirm the testimony of Jesus, his risen life, his ascension into heaven and the glory of his time here on earth. Yeah, that's that's point three. And point four is for all. I'll emphasize and underline all a little word, but a big implication. All believers to contribute. Don't come with an expectation that you're going to sit there and listen uh, and play no part. Come with an expectation that God can give you a word. God can give you something to bring. Come with an expectation to give. Get yourself in an Eastern mindset, not a Western mindset. Come to give, uh, not, not just to receive. I'm sure you will receive. You will receive if you come, but come prepared to give as well. Father, I just pray we will. You know, you've said these gifts are there to confirm the testimony of Jesus. So the, the logical alternative to that is if, if they're not there, we're not confirming the testimony of Jesus. And we want your church to confirm it now. We want to be the fullness of the glory of God. So as we come together later and encounter you, Lord, and encounter one another, we pray there will be a manifestation of your presence and your gifts. You are the word, you are the beginning, you are the alpha and omega, you are the beginning and the end. Indeed, you were the word in the beginning and the word became flesh. The word was God, the word is God. And that word brought the light unto all men. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, bless us now as we close this service. I just uh, pray you're moving in each person's home now, wherever they're listening. I pray for a blessing on all those families listening in. I just want to pray for you, Yana. I don't know if you're tuning in this morning, that you would just know the presence of God uh, right where you are now and his healing hand upon you, that you will not live in disappointment, but that you will be raised up and live in joy and hope. Mm -hmm. Father God, yeah. I know uh, people, you, you haven't got the uh, microphone in front of you, but if you've got a word... Plug it in the comments. Tim, I don't know if anything's come to you in, the, in those moments. No, the only thing I'm getting, Walter, is somebody with a, a pain, it's almost like an irritable pain in the lower gut, in the lower area of the digestive system, whether it's in the intestinal area. Um, it, it, it keeps coming and going. It's just a, an irritation. Right. You may even be taking medication for it. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> shot in the dark here. But uh, I, I just believe the Lord wants, if that is the case, deliver you from that and, um, it, you know, free you from that and heal you. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Oh, hey. Well, that's very much Yana's circumstance that we're talking about. I, I haven't spoken to Tim oh. about that. Just want oh, to confirm right. that. Um, okay. But Lord, I just pray that, you know, I feel that sense that God wants to do something special with you, Yana. And that may be a word for somebody else as well. I don't know. We just okay. The Holy Spirit's God. moving. Mm. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. you were the word in the beginning. might want to turn your microphone off Tim if you don't want everybody to hear you singing What a beautiful name. 
name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is, oh, nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. hold him, or death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and shame, the heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again, you have can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is in that powerful name of Jesus at 5.30. Let's spend the afternoon meditating on that powerful name, the name of Jesus. Let's increase our expectation in the powerful name of Jesus. Look at this raising up here. You know, that was written with a sense of discipleship, but Lord, I pray you would raise your church up. You would raise us to, to be all that you've called us to be, that we may bring true and accurate testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ and the many things he did. He promised us that we would do greater things than he. So in the name, the powerful name of Jesus, let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. I look forward to seeing those of you that can at 5.30 and ministering in that name. And, and next week, uh, James and Lucy and Bob will share this live stream as I'm on holiday. But you know, Jesus will be with us. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>